So first things first, Keen, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Um, pretty full on al- album campaign mode at the moment. So just trying to stay sane and balance all the all the plates. If we go back to when you first started kind of making music, I, I believe it was around 16. Could you envision kind of releasing an album at some point? No, I think I well, um I don't think I was ever like a huge album person listener until maybe I was in my twenties. So I probably didn't envision an album, no, not so much. To be honest, I never I wasn't like a standard stereotypical kind of musician type where I saw somebody play once and then all of a sudden I was like, that's what I want to be. Um it was very much I just kind of fell into it more so than anything. Um because I didn't know what else to do and I enjoyed it. So I just I did it and and various things happened to me over the years which which allowed me to keep going and eventually you know one step after another you become a a musician and and here we are now am i right in saying that initially your parents tried to get you to go go into classical music but that didn't really take yeah i I did like uh grades on the piano from like the age of six or so for 10 years um and yeah i didn't really enjoy it that much you know at the time i just wanted to be playing what my friends were listening to and, and stuff and eventually I grew out of that and, and found found my love when I stopped the classical music and, and, and started just playing simple chords and, and singing over it and, and losing myself in, in the kind of creative elements, you know, as opposed to just practicing. I don't think my brain works like practicing. Um, yeah, so I'm not very good at that, but, uh, but it's more so, I guess it's a bit selfish, but it's more so works towards you know creating something you know from 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 nothing i think i'm I'm far more enthused by that what did you get out of that creation the the putting words onto paper to to create a riff out of nothing what what did you get out of it what was it a, a sense of uh kind of getting your mind right as well to kind of yeah definitely there's a there's a mental health thing before i even knew what mental health was it was it was doing that for me it was acting no problem it was acting as a somebody to to talk to 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 speak to almost that I I didn't really have so I I basically the way that I write I, I tap into this uh, kind of subconscious part of my brain or I try to at least where I stop thinking about whatever's going on in my head and and just focus on what sounds right and what feels right it's kind of like walking blind in a dark room and you're just trying to feel your way to the end but but being in that place definitely makes me feel grounded and and it has a it has a big part of it's a big part of, I guess, my identity, but also I, I get so like if I don't do that or, or or speak to someone or have some sort of kind of escapism, I find it also in kind of watching movies where you're just so immersed in another world. Um, you know, I, I think I'd go insane. I I, I need that uh, escapism, um, mm. as we all do. Sure, and in, in some way or another, I think we all do. Uh, you're right, and am I right in saying as well that um. Well, your first single or official single was "Make You All Right," and up to that point, kind of to, to get to that point, it was quite somewhat of a search uh, for, for for your own identity, your musical identity. So, so what was that like? What was um, kind of discovering where your interests uh, lay, and, and discovering what you would gravitate towards musically? Yeah, really tough. Um... Yeah, I think that's the, t- the hardest part of being a musician. You know, there's okay. just so much to learn at the start. Even like st- just a menial before putting out a release, if no one's to tell you what a, like an ISO C code is or mm. like you know how to set up your payments with with you know royalties and stuff like that. I mean, it's just such a whirlwind. But I guess creatively, it was it was it was even tougher because as a songwriter who didn't like singer songwriter songs, I didn't listen to singer songwriter, which is one person on an acoustic and some bits there here and there but I liked I liked indie music I liked rock music and I wanted to I wanted to perform that but if you're the only person writing I mean bands have a common ground that they all fit fit into but there was just so many options for me and and it became quite creatively destructing the more I thought about it because yeah. I think with creativity if you think about it too much you're 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 really going backwards um so you have to kind of alleviate yourself from that so that's what somebody's child in, in its essence was for me it was just a project to to forget about what people are saying or what I should sound like or how well this band sounds in this mm-hmm. in this uh, record or whatever. So it was just a, a bit of fun um initially for me and and um and then it kind of developed. But yeah that that first finding that sound it's it's forget about it. It's better off just not to think about that kind of stuff if 
if uh, if I was to do it again, I would just write what what felt good at the time. And um, but yeah, it is a uh, it's a tricky tricky time. Yeah, is it is it difficult because there is a certain business aspect involved, or is, and and I can ma- imagine once you start forcing it, it becomes more difficult. Um, so, so to kind of not write with any expectations, so to say, was that the goal? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I was writing for like what I thought my fan would want to hear without mm. even having any fans. You know, it's just this <laughs> this crazy loop you get in your head. There's nobody cares. You know, you're doing it for yourself at the end of the day. So don't don't if you want to go in that direction, go in that direction. And and um, you know, afterwards, a bit of politics gets involved. And if you know people want to release that song or this song. Um, but until, until you have a team, you know, there's no reason to worry about that. And even when you do, you know, they don't know better than you if you've written it. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a difficult, uh, difficult time. I don't I don't envy I don't envy going back and doing doing the start of everything again, because it's, it's there's so much uncertainty. But there's also so much excitement um, as well. Sure. So it's like a relationship, isn't it? Yeah, no, the, the the funny thing, well, it's it's definitely not funny, but the, the interesting thing, I, I suppose, and once you kind of uh, solidified this idea for yourself, then the whole world uh, world shuts down for a couple of years, and and there's yeah. other challenges to face. So, so for for you, was it difficult not to kind of uh, lose momentum and uh, especially creative mem- momentum for yourself? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I thought at the start it was a great opportunity to just really get down and just okay. write so much music, which I, I is the bread and butter of what I do. Um, so I was so excited to do that. But, but I've said this so many times now, but I, like we came out with such terrible music in that time because there was just nothing to write about and none of it is to show for it. And it's not as if it's terrible. I think in the long run it will stand to us because we just got a lot of stuff that if we had released it, it would not have. It, well who knows but like I don't think it would have done well for for me and, and it probably wasn't me either so I, it allowed me that time to find myself and flush out some of the some of the crap that that needed to come out um but yeah thankfully then after it opened up everything just started the creative juices started flowing again and it's funny how it happens it's like yeah you can't can't try too hard but you can't try you can't not try at all um so mm. always finding that balance well, that's a very interesting point because I I talk to musicians about this a lot. There's there's a certain group of, uh, of artists who prefer to just start at eight in the morning, work till five or something, and have, have, make it a work day, just just hone their craft. And then there's uh, the other side of it is is people who are waiting for inspiration, uh, and then that can strike at any moment. So so which one are you, or are are you trying to balance those two things? Yeah, it's a bit of both. I mean, you, you definitely, uh, for me, it's all about just stream of consciousness at the start. Mm. So if you find yourself in a, in a period of inspiration, capitalize on that. It's probably the wrong word to use, but you know you know what I mean? Um, sure, sure. Then, uh, and then at the end of it, the way that I do it is that once a song has kind of revealed itself to me, that trying to sound too wishy-washy, but I feel like it's always there and you're just searching for it in you know, in the, in when you're in that space and, and eventually some words come and it starts to make sense and, you know, you, you start unraveling the puzzle. But then there is a certain amount of logic that has to go into it at, as well at the end. So I think it's like 70% just feeling and then 30% at the end is like piecing it all together and, and making making sense of what it is. And, and sometimes that's what's so exciting for me. It's like I'm making sense of what my head is telling me. You know, it's like right. a, a real period of self-discovery and um because none of this was there before and i didn't think it before i started singing but then ultimately these things come out and and for whatever reason that's the way it does so it's quite therapeutic in that sense that 30 percent logic at the end where um not to sense on matty like it's i'm just i'm just trying to make it make it it. uh but yeah then then you have to kind of make sense of it at the end and and um and yeah it's a it's a really really fun fun thing to do and and you know the time just just flies by when 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 i'm doing it so um so yeah but i'd say it's about it is a balance it is about finding that balance but every person's different in terms of sure. how they write you know Most people start with ideas like i've never been successful in picking an idea before writing and then mm. finishing that i've never been happy with the song in that sense but lots of people do it that way you you mentioned this uh, stream of consciousness writing. Is there one song that ended up on the album that we can kind of delve into that that you wrote and then only maybe a couple of months later figured out what it was about? Yeah, I mean, well, 
we could start a war was a crazy one with the with kind of it was just just after that black lives matter started happening and then and then obviously subsequently the war in ukraine more recently and we've released it twice on on both sides of those two world events um which gave them gave it a, a really different you know perspective and it was quite a weird feeling because you don't want to attach yourself to something that you don't have personal sure. you know I, I don't have a personal tie to these things but you are in support of 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 kind of what you believe in um, but also you don't want to be virtue signaling and saying look at this song it, this is exactly what the world is saying right now you know but it's more just social commentary and and funnily enough it happened before that kind of stuff and i think it came down so i i kind of discovered my i think i, I kind of discovered my dis- disenfranchisement to the to, to kind of the powers that be the government and stuff in mm-hmm. ireland and and around europe at the time you know with trump and boris johnson and stuff all sure. kind of culminating in this sphere of me not knowing what the hell's going on in this world you know that these people could be in power and just not having a clear sense of where I, I stand, you know, politically and just this kind of anger and a youthful sense of ignorance is almost better than 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 knowing about some of this stuff. You know, it's it's a really strange thing because, you know, people will tell you, you need to read up on this stuff. You need to be active. You need to know what's going on in the world. But you just feel so detached from 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 all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's not as if I woke up that day and I felt like that. But mm. it was it was there when when I wrote it. So um, it's yeah, it's just really interesting to to discover yourself in that way. You know, it's almost like you're able to read yourself in a book. Yeah, but what you mentioned, I think, is is an interesting point. And I've studied journalism, and and in that period, uh, obviously, I followed the news quite a bit, and yeah. uh, it's just so depressing, and you, you feel feel frustrated about all the all the ills of the world and stuff, and there's nothing to do about it. So well, no, I get that feeling completely. <laughs> um, so how do you turn then? And this is just one idea, and there's there's all kinds of. Uh, uh, subjects on the album and all kinds of ideas but how do you turn them in in these musical ideas then and and find the the right form to to present them in <laughs> so a lot of it as i say is kind of feeling and 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 i guess once the the topic of the song um is there um you know i do start to make sense of what it means to me on that day or you know on on in that given period of time and um I guess that's how it becomes a, a song about, you know, whether it's my environment in Dublin or whether it's, you know, politically charged or whether it's just about something more menial and, and an everyday part of life. Um, but, um, sorry, could you repeat the question? I kind of lost myself there. In no, but the, the, you're on the right track. It's kind of kind of how these ideas then form themselves into songs and into something tangible in a way. Yeah, so I think, I mean, I get them up to a certain point and sometimes my uh, band, my Che, is riding with me and, you know, we kind of go back and forth and and see how it's going to be. And then, but ultimately on this record, because we, we knew we, we were going in with Mako, um Gordon, we, we kind of gave him the task of being able to tie everything together sonically. Mm. So we wanted to stay away from that and give somebody else rein on that. And obviously we still had our, our opinions and, and, and all that sure. stuff, but he was able to kind of go in and say, right, you have this sound and this sound on your guitar and that's it. Can't use anything else. So really putting limits on it almost, which is really interesting creatively because I wouldn't like to do that from a songwriting point of view, but from a production point of view, it was really inspiring because you have to get creative within that within that limited space. So um, yeah, he did that. And, and then, you know, that gives us these characters that come in and out throughout the, the album. And, you know, yeah. you can tell who's playing what and, and, and just gives a really you know uniform but creative um feel to the whole thing no and then definitely ties everything together like you say i I think i didn't didn't um think of it as as being uh limiting yourself but now that you mention it it makes sense where where it, it is kind of very uniform and it kind of fits together well because you don't take too many wild uh uh, adventures in, in in a sense yeah. um one other thing i came uh, across is and i think this is in reference to hold me like you want but i'm not sure is this uh, this thing of of uh, a fear of growing up how did that kind of seep into the record uh that's just a constant you know um yeah i'm i'm 
as I get older, I just become so aware of, of, I see it's, yeah, it's a weird thing that it's kind of becoming more and more apparent in my life that I do have this chronic fear of just getting older and it's not mm. death. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not scared of death, but I am scared of, of God getting older for whatever reason. So it's, it's something that I, I feel like I still haven't fully dealt with and, and, and keeps coming through in my music. And, um, it's not something I did on purpose. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of these strange things that you're kind of always stuck between. There was this this t- theme of duality throughout the whole record and kind of felt like old versus new. And we had this 80s inspiration mm. and this tw- uh, 2000s inspiration. And we tried to turn that into something in, t- in the 2020, um, in 2022. And then this kind of feeling of, you know, in my in my past, at least, it was kind of the the old guard of the industry. And then you know my team became a lot quite like younger people and 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 also this kind of um dichotomy between politically charged songs and just these mm. these menial sides of life and also having kind of musically you know just two polarizing um themes and th- this kind of idea was was so apparent that i almost wanted to call the the album duality but uh mm. i think slipknot have a song called called duality <laughs> so, so we decided against that but uh then um I've forgotten your question again. I'm I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. This this uh, makes me think of something else that I want to get uh, kind of ask you. This this sense of uh, politically charged music, and obviously in the '60s uh, we had a lot of that stuff uh, during the civil rights era and all that kind of stuff. And then it feel felt like at least for for a couple of decades there wasn't too much of it. People or artists didn't want to kind of uh, put their political ideas out there. But now we live in an age where where that's very important, at least to to, to a lot of uh, artists. So, and with what you mentioned earlier, do, is it important for you to kind of portray this this uh, youthful, progressive outlook on life in a way? I mean, from an outside point of view, that's I'd love to to think that that's how we are portraying ourselves. But it's not something that I, I think about when it comes to the creative okay. aspect. Of all. Um, it's it's important to to take a stand and and have have an opinion and. And be able to to stand by it. Otherwise, I'm I'm not really sure what you're saying. But no, m- mostly I think it the most important thing is just to be honest. And these feelings are 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 true and and are honest. And that's how that's how I feel at that time. And I, it's almost like I don't journal, but this it's it's commentating on my youth and it's 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 allowing me to visit back into my past and see exactly how I felt about these things. And and when you take it and look at it in in the time and space that it that it came from. It's it's really interesting to see it from that perspective because at the time you 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 don't me- you don't mean to do it like that but, sure. but I was in like a, I was in a gallery the other day and you know one of the things was like how you should look at art and and uh, a lot of it is just the time and place that it came from and how did that how did that inspire the the artist and and um, it's funny how your environment can can just have such a massive impact on you and um, and and part of that is you know change you know having to to be able to change and and that's that's uh that's why i moved away from dublin since since um since covid because i needed a new chapter in my life and i i couldn't keep creating in the same space it wasn't um it wasn't healthy for my for my creative you know process well where do you live now i live in london now well only for two months yeah but yeah um, how, how have you found that change then because it's always uh, i mean there's 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 uh both sides to cha- uh going through change right there's there's this f- uh, fear or anxiety and but there's also this excitement so so yeah. what have you found this past two months then uh have, have your creative juices been flowing a lot uh again so we, we're kind of in campaign mode now so i've been holding mm-hmm. off we, we stopped writing in like like we kind of kept writing into like august okay and September, but we weren't really. We were just kind of keeping it going. And to be honest, we probably should have just stopped and waited because we we want to have a different sound on album two. But we we did a couple of bits of um writing in October. We went to Wales and wrote for a couple of weeks. Me and my bandmate Shay, um, and he'll be over next week. So we have had a start on album two, but um, I think I think that nervous and excitement thing that you talked about. That's exactly where you need to be, to to create in the best way. I think it was like Bowie. I remember seeing a clip of him talking about how creativity should be, and just when you feel uncomfortable is exactly the place you should be in when you're either releasing music or, or making something new, because comfortable is the death of all creativity, and um, or comfort is the death of all creativity. And then 
being too experimental is almost like you're trying too hard and that that will mm. that will cause that will cause problems as well because you know if you're super conscious then you're just going to write really self-conscious music um so you need to find that balance as well so uh keeping things new and fresh is is definitely really important mm. and with this uh self-titled album uh, being the debut album and it's coming out in uh a couple of weeks time third of february yeah. if i'm not mistaken um how do you see this album is is this just as you mentioned kind of or alluded to earlier is, is this kind of like a snapshot moment of, of this period of your life and now you're moving on to the next or do you can you see a continuation and and where do you want to head as an artist in a way um i i think i mean for me it's it's one of those things that i've gone back and forth with so many times but I, at the moment I'd love to be able to be the person that is able to adapt as much as possible to, to, to how they're feeling, but also feel quite grounded. So, um, you know, knowing, having that sense of confidence in who you are and what you want and, and being able to make a decision and stick with it. Um, but also being able to be flexible around mm. other people's opinions, for example, allowing them to, to express that and, and also knowing what you want at the same time. So, um, it's an ever changing process. I think being a creative and you need to be able to, to change and adapt and, and, and also, yeah, have that confidence. So, so I, I hope, I hope that I can maintain those two things. What, what do you hope that people hear in this debut album? I hope that they get their own sense out of it. I hope that they, I hope that the people that need to hear it, hear it. Um, I get a lot of joy out of not fully understanding mm. everything. And I hope that they do as well and find their own meaning in it. Final question then. Uh, I think you're uh, heading on tour uh, first in the UK and then Ireland and then Europe. Uh, I think a couple of shows as well. So, so and quite, quite a number of shows, I, uh, I believe, and, and even to the US, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we've got uh, with us, yeah. Yeah, so, so what are your, how are you working towards playing live and, and towards that whole kind of cycle once the album is out yeah good i mean we haven't done anything yet so we're, okay. we still have to do all the rehearsals so it's interesting but uh, to be honest like a couple of these songs we've been playing for a while because mm. we didn't release music for quite a while so we had the sure. time to to and we knew they were going to be coming out at some stage we knew what was going to be on the album we, we, we were certain of, of a few so it's just about introducing maybe three or four more new ones that that um into the set and then also trying to level up just the performance and just getting it as tight as possible so that when you're on stage you can do different things and change and move around and 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 be able to adapt um so it's really exciting to be able to share this new music i mean i i know some people are going to be pissed off that we're not saying we're not singing some some tunes but we need to move past some other ones as well you know and, and move on to something new even for ourselves have you always uh, been attracted to to the stage, to performing live, or was that a learning curve for you? Uh, not really. No, no. I got a lot of confidence from my band. I think mm. just being up there, but um, I, I definitely think it feels natural, which is good. But I wasn't. I was never like have to do that. You know, I, I don't get that sense of attention seeking. I suppose um, <laughs> naturally, but uh, I do really enjoy being up there. I mean, it's a high like no other. So um yeah I, I definitely try and cherish it while i can but uh it's also it's it's tough work touring i mean it's not it's not just getting up on stage for an hour every day it's it's a lot of um you have to be quite careful and just even trying to be healthy throughout, throughout the whole time is is really challenging so that's that's what we're going to try and do this time you know and not just be drinking every day and <laughs> it's not our first tour anymore so um we'll need to be need to be a bit smarter about it yeah a couple more sensible decisions um yeah. Yeah. Kian, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I wish you all the best and uh, yeah, good luck with the album. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.